Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are having a good Christmas Eve. I hope you guys have a good Christmas tomorrow, but if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. Excuse me. Sorry if you heard that. I should have moved my mic away. I make videos for NBA. I make videos for NFL. Um, I post them on a subreddit. Um, called DF Sports, as you can see right here, with one S. So, DF Sports, um, post my NFL videos here, post my NBA videos here. I, I post all updates with news, stuff like that. Um, you know, people post a lot of good content here. Uh, I think it's a pretty great place, in my opinion. So, if, if this is something you're interested in, definitely check it out. And if you ever need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me through the Reddit, Reddit Messenger. Or you can get a hold of me through Twitter at Tori Langley1992. So, yesterday I had a good day. Um, I didn't cash in tournaments, but um, sportsbook bets definitely helped me. And I'm, I'm getting rocked in NFL. I'm absolutely getting rocked today. Um, I made a dumb pivot before lock. Uh, I'll show that in the NFL video for tomorrow. Uh, but just absolutely getting rocked. Uh, but yeah, this is my lineup from last night. Uh, I went Jalen Brunson, Bradley Beal, Trey Murphy, KJ Martin, Rudy Gobert, CJ McCollum, Najee Marshall, Jonas Valanciunas. It would have been a great night if, you know, Jonas Valanciunas just played the game. And if Rudy Gobert actually did something... I got lucky with Trey Murphy OT, I got CJ OT, I got Najee OT, Jonas didn't play in the OT, but if he would have, I assume he would have got there. Um, I told everyone in the Discord, I'm playing four Pels, we loaded up on the Pelicans, so some good days in the Discord, but it could have been such a good night if Jonas Valanciunas from Rudy Gobert didn't bust for me, it just could have been an amazing night, uh, but nothing you can do about it. The core that I had was Jalen Brunson. Um, CD McCollum, Jonas Valanciunas, and KJ Martin. So three out of four, or two out, two out of four there. Brunson kind of bust. KJ Martin smashed. CD McCollum smashed, and Jonas Valanciunas busted pretty hard. But um, let's go over this five-game slate for this Christmas day. Um, not a lot of good spots to target here, but um, I think this is it's obviously Christmas, so. We're going to have fun with it. Philly at the Knicks. Not a game I want to target, but I think there are some pretty solid plays in this game. So, Knicks 20th in pace. Uh, 9th in defensive rating. So, obviously, you know, not the best matchup. But Sixers, they're running such a tight rotation. You're getting huge, huge minutes for Embiid. You're getting huge minutes for Harden. I think both of these guys look pretty good. Even in a tough matchup, um, there aren't many spend-ups in good spots on this slate. So if you're going to go with the spend-up, they're going to be in a bad spot. So you're going to have to pick and choose there outside of Luka. Um, you're going to have to pick and choose there. But I like Joel Embiid's ceiling. I mean, he's playing unbelievably. Definitely a candidate for MVP. Double-double upside. Going to play huge minutes. Going to shoot the ball a million times. Going to get to the free throw line a million times. I think he looks like an interesting GPP option. I might prefer Harden to Embiid point per, point per dollar. He's put, He played 41 minutes last game in regulation. one for 20, 21, and 11. Absolutely insane. But that's a James Harden stat line, right? He's going to go for a double-double most likely. He has triple-double upside. So, yeah, um, I'm definitely interested in James Harden. I think he's a solid play. Getting to anyone else is extremely, extremely difficult for me. On uh, Especially... There isn't a lot of value. Like, you couldn't pay me to play P.J. Tucker. Um, they're running such a tight rotation. It's really hard to get to guys like Georges Niang. Um, he'll probably play, you know, around 20 minutes. I think it's doable, but um, it's really just hard and, and, and bead for me on the Sixers. Let's go over the Knicks now. Really tough spot here. Sixers, 26th in pace. Second in defensive rating. So, um, the thing here is... The starters are playing like 46 minutes game. RJ played 39 minutes last game. Was this not? Yeah, RJ played 39 minutes. Jalen Brunson played 39 minutes. You had Julius Randle play basically 40 minutes. So once again, extremely, extremely tight rotation. I think the the main three are all solid plays solely on the fact that they're going to play huge minutes. Normally, 
if this was a different team, I would probably just stay away. But there are a lot of gross spots on this slate, so I think this is just different for me. So Randall, Brunson, RJ all look solid to me. Richard Rob Mitchell Robinson, I'm extremely worried about foul trouble. He is always in foul trouble anyway. Now he's going up against Joel Embiid, so I'm extremely, extremely hesitant to go to Mitchell Robinson. The guy that I will mention is Isaiah Hartenstein at 3.2K. We don't have a lot of value on the slate. I think there's a good chance Mitchell Robinson gets into foul trouble. Hartenstein will benefit from that. A really good point for many guy. Already mentioned there's not a lot of value on the slate. I'm very, very intrigued by Isaiah Hartenstein for GPPs. Quentin Grimes will start. He'll probably play mid-30s minutes. I'm fine with it um, as a GPP play. You know, doesn't really have a ceiling, but with no value, I think he's an okay um, salary relief salary relief play. Quickly, minutes are all over the place, but I think he at least plays around, like, you know, 20. Um, Going to be productive when he's on the court. Um, I think he's an okay option for value. Going over to the Lakers. Got a tough matchup here for the Lakers, the Dallas Mavericks there, 29th in pace, um, 15th in defensive rating. So uh, AD going to continue to be out. We do have Thomas Bryant, probable, I believe. I'm going to assume he is in. So, I mean, LeBron's on a tear right now. No AD. His usage is absolutely insane. So I think he makes for one of the better spend-ups on the slate. Has triple-double upside. Once again, you're going to have to target some tough, tough matchups here. So, um, I'm not going to really get into matchups. So, I do like the ceiling for LeBron. I think he makes for one of the better spot-ups on the slate. Westbrook is just not playing enough, man. I, I, I don't understand it. So, at 7.4K, if he's only going to play mid-20s minutes, it's extremely, extremely hard for me to go there. I think Thomas Bryant's too cheap. I don't know why the price went down. doesn't really make sense to me. He should have been at 6.1K once again here. I don't hate the spot against Christian Wood as well, so I think Thomas Bryant makes for uh, one of the better mid-range options on the slate. Lonnie, Schroeder, they're both playable values. Um, I think both are priced appropriately, but both will play around mid-20s minutes. They're going to be have to, they're going to have to be the number two and three in scoring when Westbrook's off the court, so they're both playable, but not in love with it. I think I prefer Austin Reeves at 4.1K. I think he makes for one of the better value plays on the slate. Um, you know, he's been an intricate part of this rotation. I'm expecting around 30 minutes for him. I know I'm going to say this a lot, but we have no value. So um, I think Reeves is a pretty solid value play on the slate. Patrick Beverly at 3.7K, you know, he's playable. I do prefer Reeves though, but if you don't have the money for him, be my guest. I think it's completely fine. Um, I don't think I can go to anyone else. If I'm, if I'm going to pump with the center, it's probably going to be Hartenstein, so I don't really think I would go to Gabriel. All right, really good match here for the Dallas Mavs. Lakers are first in pace, 19th in defensive rating. So if you have the salary for Luka, he just looks absolutely phenomenal. I, you guys are going to hear me say this a million times. Um, Lakers are terrible against guards, so Luka should just absolutely destroy in this spot. So... Absolutely love Luca if you can afford him. Wood at 7.9K, you know, I'm expecting high 20s to, you know, around 30 minutes. It's a good matchup. Um, I, I think his price is a little bit overpriced for me, but he does have a ceiling um, and can get extended at times. So I do have interest in Wood. I just don't think he's a standout play for me. I actually have interest in Dimwitty too. 41 minutes, 37 minutes past two games. Dallas is running a much, much tighter rotation. If we're going to get some more minutes from Spencer Dinwiddie, I think his floor and ceiling is just that much higher. So I think he's an interesting low-owned dart play just because of those minutes that he's been playing of late. But outside of that, um, I think he's priced appropriately. That's if, if these guys are all out. Um, that being Kemba, um, Bullock, Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, I would only consider Dinwiddie because then I think his minutes are just, he's locked in for 40 minutes, basically. Um, so that's something to consider. Tim Hardaway Jr., 5.3K, you guys know the drill. You know what I'm going to say. Probably plays around 30 minutes, very reliant on scoring. Just there for me. I'm fine with it. Don't hate it. Um, having sh shooting forward and shooting guard eligibility is definitely clutch. Definitely do prefer all of these questionable guys to be out once again to get to uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. If they are in, then that definitely downgrades him. 
Dwight Powell, he'll probably play, you know, around 20 minutes. Very low usage. Once again, I think I'd rather go to Hartenstein over him. So, let's move on to Milwaukee. So, this game should be phenomenal to watch. Um, for DFS purpose, purposes, maybe not so much, but should be a great game to watch. Um, where's Boston? Boston, Boston, 14th in pace. And... 7th in defensive rating. So, Giannis at the top. Not the best spot. I think he's more of a contrarian play for me. I think I'd rather go to Luka in a much better matchup. But we know he's a ceiling. You know, um, is a primetime game. He always shows up in primetime games. His minutes go up in primetime games. So, um, I think he's an interesting dart for me uh, for GPPs. If Middleton's out, you can consider a guy like Drew Holiday. If Middleton's in, I probably wouldn't go there. But... Drew Holiday is a guy that can stuff the stat sheet, pretty much do anything for the team. Phenomenal defender, can get those defensive stats. I don't hate it, but would only consider it if Middleton's out. Portis overpriced, Brolo overpriced. Grayson, Pat Connaughton, these two guys are probably going to play around 20 minutes. They'll both be in the rotation. Grayson will play more than Pat Connaughton, but Pat Connaughton will be a little bit more productive than Grayson. Um, if I had to pick one, I might lean Pat Connaughton. Just because I like the guy that's going to be more productive. But I think both are perfectly fine values. Bochamp at 3.2k. Um, I think it's doable, but not in love with it. So, let's move on to Boston. Alright, tough spot here. The Milwaukee Bucks, 15th in pace. 3rd in defensive rating. So, not much here. Once again, Tatum Brown. In play, I like their ceiling, but once again, a very, very bad spot for uh, both of them. So, uh, they're just tournament options for me. Marcus Smart at 6.1K. Going to play huge, huge minutes. I honestly prefer him point per dollar to Tatum and Brown. So, I do like Smart. Brogdon, minutes kind of all over the place, but uh, will get extended at times. If you think he gets extended, like if I knew Brogdon was going to play 30 minutes again, I would definitely like him quite a bit, but just know uh, minutes are all over the place there. Robert Williams, a 4.3K, if he plays with no value on the slate. If we get 20-plus minutes of Robert Williams, I definitely think he's in play for value. Um, so keep an eye on that. And if we get Robert Williams out, you're going to have a $5,000 Al Horford who would look, uh, even in a tough matchup, pretty good to me. I think that would be a little bit too cheap. Derek White, um, playable. Once again, 4.2K. He probably plays, you know, I don't know, him and Brogdon, their minutes fluctuate, so it's definitely risky. But um, I think he has an uh, more of an opportunity to play more minutes than Brogdon. So Derek White's safer. I think Brogdon has the definitely higher ceiling when he gets the minutes, but White's fine. And then I think that's probably it for Boston. Let's move on to the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, good spot here for Memphis. The Golden State Warriors, second in pace. They have a bad defensive, I feel like. Where are they? Just bad, bad, bad. Yeah, 25th in defensive rating. So we do have Desmond Bain back. He was on the limit, limit last game, played 24 minutes. Desmond Bain being back definitely takes a hit to John Morant. It takes a hit to Dylan Brooks. It takes a hit to Jaron Jackson. J Jaron Jackson. So downgrade to all of those guys. I, I don't think much stands out to me on the Memphis side. Um, I think Jaron at 6.6K has the ceiling. I think it's a good spot individually for him. We'll have to monitor the Andrew Wiggins news on the other side. And the I think there's more news too. Uh, but we'll take a look. But not much, man. Um, I think Jaw is okay. I think can't get to Bane on a limit. Dylan Brooks is overpriced with Bain back. Jaron Jackson Jr., I believe, is still on kind of a limit. Um, he'll probably play, you know, around 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more. I think Jaron might be my favorite play on Memphis right now. I think Tyus is overpriced. I think Steven Adams is a very, very safe play. Probably not going to kill you. Not going to win you a GPP, though. It does have double-double upside, but that's extremely, extremely rare. So uh, I do like Steven Adams for value. Brandon Clark will play the backup five um, minutes for him. Probably high teens to mid teens. Good point per minute guy. I think people are going to chase just because he had that monster game last game. But once again, a playable value and then uh, not going to get to anything else. Let's move on to the Golden State Warriors. 
Alrighty. Uh, Memphis, ninth in pace. Fifth in, like, fifth in defense. Just not good spots here. But I really like Poole at 8.3k. I think people are going to be scared to play him after being popular after two really, really bad games. If they want any chance of keeping this close, it's going to have to be Poole. It's going to have to be Clay Thompson. These two are going to have to be able to keep them in it. I think both look good for tournaments. I think both might go a little bit under-owned than they should be. Both have extremely, extremely high ceilings. Pool has the higher four, but I do like both quite a bit for GPPs. We have Wiggins out for Sunday on Christmas, so you're going to get Dante DiVincenzo starting, probably playing, you know, mid-30s minutes. At this price tag, more of just a tournament play for me. Not really going to stand out. I'd much rather go to Draymond Green if I point AK, who I think makes for one of the better mid-range options on the slate. He's been dealing with foul trouble, been dealing with blowouts. I think we get huge minutes for him here. Guy that can stuff the stat sheet, do it all. I think he's going to be a pretty popular play tomorrow. I do like Draymond Green a lot. Um, Kamega, Looney, I don't think I can do it. Um, let me pull up the popcorn machine for a sec. Why don't they have the 21st game there? I don't understand it. Why do they not have that game? Um, but whatever. Uh, I think it's just the main guys for me personally. Uh, we'll monitor the starting lineup. Sorry, guys, about the phone. Uh, we'll monitor the starting lineup, and then um, I'll make updates when we get that news. Um, so, yeah. Um, Clay is obviously back. That's going to be a hit to Moody and those guys. But we'll, we'll monitor the starting lineup. Phoenix at Denver. Denver is 18th in pace. They've not been good defensively this year, I feel like. Uh, yeah, 23rd in defensive rating. So we have Booker, questionable. Um, if he is in, nothing for me on the Phoenix side really stands out. You have eight in a tough matchup against Jokic. You have Booker overpriced with Booker back. Or you have Chris Paul overpriced with Booker back. Booker himself, I would like his ceiling quite a bit. I always get Booker right, so I'll let you guys know if I'm playing him. Um, and then, yeah, not much else. But if we get Booker out, then CP3, uh, going to be one of the better mid-range plays in the slate. I've already mentioned a million times, not much value, so I think the mid-range build might be the way to go. But haven't messed with builds as of now, but I'll mess with it. I think... Uh, he would make one of the better plays in the mid-range. Just the floor and ceiling with no Booker. He's going to have to take a lot more shots. He's going to have to be more aggressive offensively. The assist rate could go down. I'd have to look at that. I don't know if his assist rate, his potential assist rate is better um, with Chris Paul or with Devin Booker or not. I would assume it's better with him. So that'll probably go down, but... Yeah, um, I think it's a solid play if Booker is out. Aiton's just fine. I don't like the matchup. British, you guys know the drill. Going to play huge minutes. Martha for defense. I think he's appropriately priced. Landry Shamit will probably draw the start. Probably play around 30 minutes. Been extremely, extremely productive. I don't think he's this good of a point per minute guy, but price went down. Solid. Damian Lee. Um, I don't know what that rotation was. They had... I believe Dwayne Washington getting rotational minutes over him. Uh, let me take a look. So you had Dwayne Washington come in first. Damian Lee played in the blowout, so I would not play Damian Lee. Um, he only played because the game blew out. Josh Koji only played because the game blew out too. So if we are going to... Motherfucker. If we are going to get um, Dwayne Washington coming in for that Damian Lee role, I definitely think he's an interesting value play. He's a good point per minute guy. So monitor that on the Denver side. Um, just Jokic for me at the top. Um, that's about it. Uh, Murray, I think, is priced right. Gordon's priced right. MPJ is priced right. Bruce Brown with uh, Murray back can't do it. Bones priced right. I think KCP is a good value of 4.6K. But um, I think that's really it for me. Hope you guys have a good Christmas.